Hey everyone, it's Zeraldo here. First thing I'd just like to apologize about the lack of videos recently. There have just been so many assignments and essays and tests. Um, it's just been horrendous. And my education has to come first. I'm paying a lot of money for this and it's something I really want to do. So that's got to come before the games and the videos, unfortunately. I've got my next few exam. Well, I've got my exams coming up in the next couple of weeks, but I don't have any more classes, so I've got a bit more time on my hands. I can study and still have time for videos. They won't quite be back up properly though, weekly or whatever, until the 30th. With that aside, today we're going to be talking about the Battle Mage class, which is the newest class in Adventure Quest Worlds. It's pretty cool, it's magic based, and it's got a couple of little interesting things and surprises, so I hope you find this guide helpful. In order to get your Battle Mage class, you can just take the easy shortcut way with your adventure coins and go to the Battle Mage class. Um, it'll be in the class list in Batlon. As you can see, it's quite a big, bulky armor, one of the biggest in the game. It's quite nice, it's got some matching helmets and all that sort of thing. Even so, 2,000 adventure coins, non-member, or you can do what I did and get a rank 10 sword haven. If you get the rank 10 sword haven, you go here and you go shops, and you've got Royal Battle Mage. So the only difference between Royal Battle Mage and Battle Mage is that Royal Battle Mage has Royal in its name and is a non-member item for 100,000 gold, whereas just Battle Mage is adventure coins. And will be able and is able to be stored in the bank for ACs. So it's up to you how you want to go about getting that. Despite the fact that level 55 is now the max level, I'd still recommend using your ore enhancements, even though they aren't quite level 55. This is because the plus at level 50, you've got plus 4, which is a few extra stat points, which makes it on average a bit more powerful than a level 50 enhancement. Also, the special moves that these enhancements do are well worth it, because it's only a small little range, and you've still got your cape, class, and helmet enhancements that can be enhanced to higher levels. Specifically for this class, I'd recommend Health Vamp or Spiral Carve. Now, I'll just show you the stats and passives. Um, personally, I think Wizard for this class. Maybe Spellbreaker, and maybe a bit of luck, but I'm leaning towards Wizard or Spellbreaker. I'm going Wizard myself for the just raw damage. Um, just one thing to note, these are all magical attacks. So, Intellect, enhance accordingly. Um, the passives at rank 4 are very, very powerful. Physical damage received reduced by 30%. So, Spellbreaker will give you a lot more HP. So if you're wanting to use this as a bit more of a tanky mage, go with the Spellbreaker. If more offensive, go for Wizard. Um, the other thing to note is your Wisdom increases by 20%. So you want to go with the Wizardy sort of builds that do, and Wizardy like magic based builds, that do increase your Wisdom because a 20% boost to any stat is significant. Now because you've got a 30% passive, which no class has ever had, in fact, I think the highest was Vindicator of They with 20. You got a 20. That's a 50% boost sort of total. Um, because that's so high, there is no rank 10 passive for this class. Uh, just as far as mana regen goes, Battle Mages are rejuvenated by their Arcane Strike granting them bonus mana with every successful blow. So you've got Arcane Strike, which is just the name of the auto attack. So essentially, restoring MP functions very similarly to how a warrior would work. So I hope that sort of clarifies how the stats for this particular class work. So I'm going to show you how this class works now. The coolest thing about this class is that it switches from area of effect, aka hitting multiple targets at once, to switching one to switching to hitting one target at a time and as the player you are able to control this yourself so i'll show you what this is like in area of effect mode so we'll just ignore enchanted blade for the moment and go on to arcane fire now this is just an explosive fireball as it says that does that attacks three targets at once for a large amount of damage by large amount they mean in about 500 or so 
I'll just do that again. Um, you've also got explosive shield, and that's quite useful. It's basically a jacked up version of the mage class's mana shield. It. <laughs> Sorry. Battle Mage is MP instead of HP, so it attacks your MP instead of HP, as well as reducing the amount your skills cost in that time for 10 seconds. The initial activation of your shield will also damage. So, I don't know how much of a difference you'll notice in terms of damage, but if you look, I'm not taking damage, it's my MP that's going down, and it's not taking a huge amount. So you're seeing that if you have a lot of health, this class can be quite good in a situation with multiple players. Now I'll just show you the third move, I mean the fourth move, Arcane Devastation. Now that's 62 mana and that's a lot. It conjures a powerful explosive Arcane Blast damaging three targets. Um, now this is another effect when you're only taking a one, but I'll just demonstrate. It's quite expensive but it didn't actually use any mana. It's got a relatively large cooldown. In fact, most of these moves have large cooldowns. So you just get the idea. The one I'd recommend starting with would be Explosive Shield. Because that'll stop you taking large damage and let you just attack everything. It is an attack in its own right as well. So as you can see, the damage output when it hits is relatively decent. It's as with most a as with most area of effect classes, you've got the problem where you take a lot of damage. So you generally want to use this in a group situation. But the battle mage class is a lot more diverse than your average area of effect class. Because it also has the enchanted blade move which removes the area of effect capability, so it reduces you to a single target spell. Now, this increases your spell damage and accuracy by 50%. So you, yeah, 50% more powerful, 50% more likely to hit. Now, the auto attack benefits from this initially, uh, even though it's only critting. Do you get the idea? Now, Unlike most moves, this move's duration is for the same amount of time as its cooldown, so you just keep that indefinitely active. Now this makes it quite good at tanking because you're doing a fair amount of damage. You've got a large damage reduction, and you've got an MP shield, but you've only got one enemy actually harming your shield. Not only that, you can further increase your damage by this. So this is another 30%. Now I believe that's 180% damage you're doing. Uh, now you might want to consider a bit of luck. I don't really think it's necessary. You really want to keep your wisdom and your intelligence up. This is a sort of specialized class in that respect. But you know, you're hitting a thousands very commonly. Now just remember this is a re the star sword here is a relatively balanced weapon in terms of damage range. You're not really getting a huge difference. So, um, other weapons like the Soul Ripper, you have huge damage ranges in the Soul Mender. This is pretty small and narrow, so it's a lot more accurate. So, you've got a lot of options with this class. I really think that's cool. It's the first area of effect class to do this, and I'm looking forward to see if they mess around with these concepts elsewhere. I think it's I think it's quite pretty, but it's a bit bulky for my liking. So that's my guide for how to use Battle Mage. I hope it helped and I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that clarifies whether it's worth getting for ACs or all the time for repping. I'll be doing classes on the 50th anniversary class, which comes out in the next two weeks at some point. The Oracle class, which we are going to be getting for a million likes on Facebook. I got my information from Twitter if anyone asks. Um, calendar class for 2014, now that one will be difficult because I've actually got to wait for a calendar to arrive if I order it overseas. And the Jouster class, which is from the Wheel of Doom, so that 
could be interesting when that comes up. So those are the four upcoming classes that I hope to do. And now that I have some time, I'm going to be working on Archfiend. It's still going to take me ages to get, but I'm going to be working on it. Until then, take care and see you around hopefully. Bye.